So anyway, let's go ahead and gather up all the stuff that we got in our last video and make ourselves a cuff bracelet. What we are going to need, first of all, is our bench block. That is what our blank is going to sit on that we're going to stamp on. So it's just your big piece of metal that was the two and a half by two and a half square that you got at Hobby Lobby. And then you also need your blank that you got from Hobby Lobby. So you got your 12 pack of cuff blanks, bracelet cuff uh, blanks, blah, blah. And these, you're going to just start with one for now, but keep the others handy in case you mess up. I'm not mess up today too. Then we are going to use stamps. I'm going to be using some stamps that are going to look a little bit different than yours, but uh, we're gonna get a pretty similar outcome, okay? And then, let's see, we need our hammer. This is the 329 hammer that you got from Harbor Freight that's actually cheaper than 329 because of your 20% off coupon. Here is the polar block. Um, mine's clearly a little used that you purchased at the beauty supply. You're going to want your Sharpie marker. Any kind of Sharpie can work just fine. So um, this one is just a regular old, you know, fine point Sharpie. This one is an ultra fine point. Um, if you want to just color just inside the impressions, Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're gonna use this one today. And then your duct tape and your electrical tape. So we've got quite the pile going on here, which is awesome. You know what? The focus on my camera is super squeaky. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start clearing some things out of the way. I'm using the scissors to cut the tape with. All right, so the very first thing that I want to do, oh shoot, facelift. Bracelet bending, bracelet bending pliers. So these are going to be used at the very end in order to, you know, bend your bracelet. So we need these guys too. Okay, and the first thing that I want to do is to tape my bench block. So I'm gonna use the duct tape for this. Now, I do this every time. And the reason that I use duct tape on my bench block is because um, when I am stamping, the back side of my blank is going to be touching this metal, and then when I hit my impression against it, it forces the metal backwards and it scrapes against whatever surface it's touching. So if I have a rough surface or if there are any nicks or scratches or anything on my bench block, that's going to show up on the back of my blank. So I like to put some kind of tape on here. I used to use electrical tape. Uh, which is fine, but I have switched to duct tape just because I can get it cuter. And also because I only have to put two strips of duct tape on instead of like six strips of electrical tape. So that's the only reason. But if you want to stick with just electrical tape or whatever, that's just fine. Okay, so I'm going to put these two as close together as I can. It doesn't really matter too much because I'm not going to stamp right on this crease or we're going to have a problem with um, a crease impression on the back of the blank. Okay, the next thing is we have our blank here. I don't know why Impress Art does this, but if you can see, one side is just shiny metal and the other side has some blue plastic coating on it. And that's super awesome to have that plastic coating, except this is on the back side, which doesn't make any sense to me. The way that you can tell that it is the back side is that if you run your finger along the edges here, this feels kind of smooth and rounded, but this side, it feels kind of sharp. And we're going to clean up that sharpness later, but it's just not as pretty to stamp on the side and not as finished looking as it is to stamp on the front. So make sure you stamp on the front. And we're gonna peel off this plastic and set this on our bench block. And then we're going to use the electrical tape. So the electrical tape does two things for us here. First of all, it is going to secure our blank to the stamping surface. Okay, so then it's also going to give us a straight edge that our stamps can touch in order to give us a straight stamping line. And I'll show you what I mean when we're ready to stamp. So I might get my head in the shot here, but when I'm putting this on, my blank wants to move. 
when I'm putting this on, um, I want to make sure that it's as even as I can get it, just eyeballing it, and just catch that bottom edge of the blank. And that way, our stamp, it's gonna have equal distance between the top and the bottom, so it'll be more centered. Oh, one other thing. I forgot to grab my little design stamp, so I'm gonna just grab a heart. Everybody loves hearts. You probably got a heart or a star or something pretty basic, so. Anyway, so that's where we're starting. So now that that's all set up, let's go ahead and plan our cuff bracelet. So what I prefer to do first so that I can show you some tricks is I'm going to write out what I'm going to stamp. And today let's just do one word. And in, I would suggest keeping it short for your first thing like a name or um, you know something with just a few letters just so that you can get a feel for this. But I'm going to do the word grateful. Do you like how shaky my handwriting is today? It's so pretty. So I am doing the word grateful. It has a few extra letters in it, you know, more than just like, you know, Beth or something. Um, because I want to be able to give you plenty of example for how to line up our letters, okay? So we need to count the letters because we want to find the center of this word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to split this in half right in the middle um, between the T and the E. And this is where the word is going to show up on our blank. So I'm gonna put this right here so that I can see it as I stamp. Okay, trying to get this all squared away here. Now I'm also going to have hearts on either side, but I wasn't worried about counting those. Okay. Now we'll start stamping. We'll grab our trusty little hammer here and our stamps. Now when I am stamping, I am very careful to keep my font in alphabetical order, no matter what kind of container it's in. Um, it's really important to me to keep them in alphabetical order. Well, I was gonna show you what's in here. Woo, ha, more letters. Okay, so that is important to me because when I am stamping, I don't wanna waste time hunting through my stamps to find the right letter. I just know right where it is because they're right in order. And then the other thing is I keep them all facing the same direction so that when I take them out, my thumb is always on the same side so that I'm not worried about upside down letters or things like that. But I do always want to make sure that I check the letter to make sure that I've got the right letter in the right orientation before I start stamping, okay? So I'm gonna set these out of the way. And normally, if I am stamping out of a container like this one, what I'll do is I'll take my letter out. My thumb is on the bottom of the letter and then I just spin it in my hand and then it's ready to stamp. So that's how I do it. Okay. Okay, let's get started. I am going to start in the middle of this blank. I'm just gonna eyeball it and mark about the center with my Sharpie. That is close enough for me. Once it's, you know, bent into a bracelet, nobody's gonna be able to tell if it's just a little bit off. When we start, we're going to start with the letter E in grateful. And that is because we're going to work from the center to the right, and then from the center to the left, and that's going to make sure that we keep our words centered, okay? So let's start with the letter E. Now here comes the fun part. I'm gonna show you how to line this up. So what I want to do is, I want to make sure that the bottom of the letter here see this there we go that the bottom of the letter is facing me and the top of the letter is facing away and then I'm going to set it on my blank and I want to make sure that this edge of the stamp right here is parallel to the edge of my blank 
And if I can't see the edge of my blank, I'm just gonna run my little fingernail or something. If you're not a fingernail girl or guy, <laughs> you can go ahead and just run your fingernail or a pen or something right along the edge of the blank so that you can see where parallel is. So I wanna focus on keeping this edge parallel to the bottom of the blank. Then I'm gonna rest this on the right side of my little mark there. And I'm going to just slide it backwards until I can feel the bottom edge of the letter just tap against this tape, okay? So it's right there against the tape. This edge is parallel to the bottom of the blank. Now I can hit it. I'm gonna just give it one good whack. You don't have to hit it so hard that you're gonna hammer through your work surface, but give it a good whack. And now I have a nice impression. Okay, so now let's move on to the next letter, which is F. So the next thing is when I am lining up my letters then from side to side, I want to pay attention to the orientation of where the stamp is in relation to the letter that I just previously stamped. And the way that I do that with most stamping sets that I have is this side, this left side of the stamp here, will halfway cover the last letter that I stamped. I'm gonna take a picture of that and insert it here. So you can see that the left side of the stamp, when I'm stamping from left to right, the left side of the stamp halfway covers the impression of the, the letter that I previously stamped. Okay, hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna make sure that I am putting my stamp here on my blank, covering it halfway, while well, covering the last letter about halfway, making sure that the back of this is perpendicular to the edge of the blank and that the bottom of the letter is facing me. Give it a whack. And you can see that's good spacing. Okay, now let's go to the letter U. Another thing is I am very shaky, especially my left hand, so it's really easy for me to wiggle around. So one thing that I do is I make sure that my stamp here is kind of resting against the middle of my ring finger, and then I can use my pinky and my ring finger resting against the bench block to keep it more stable. So again, I'm gonna halfway cover that last letter with the left side of my shank there and slide it till I feel this tape and keep this edge perpendicular with the edge here. Look what I did. <laughs> I did it upside down. I didn't follow my own advice. I'm gonna keep them all facing the same direction. So when I take them out, my thumb is always on the same side so that I'm not worried about upside down letters or things like that. But I do always want to make sure that I check the letter to make sure that I got the right letter. So I'm gonna pause really quickly. I'm gonna stamp out a new one. If you find that you're making mistakes, you just need to slow down. It's okay. All right, back to the U. Ah, right side up, okay. And then the last one is L. So checking it, halfway covering the U, slide it down till it's at the tape. Make sure that I'm perpendicular, give it a whack. And now I'm going to work the other way. So we're gonna go with the letter T. And this time I'm going to make sure that the right side is halfway covering the E. And since I shake, I, I can't stamp straight anymore, so it's just a thing, but that's okay. It's just is what it is. So there's our T. Now we need the letter A here. Halfway cover that T, slide down to the tape, keep it perpendicular, and whack it. So one thing too is that you might find that certain stamps that you have, that bottom edge is not sharp, so the bottom edge of a letter. So when you go to meet that tape, you're not going to feel it, and you might accidentally dangle down below. And um, that's okay, that's just happens when you're learning your stamps. And so 
just be aware if you discover that, you know, oh, my E doesn't catch on the edge of the tape, then you'll know to pay attention to that next time you stamp with the E. And a G. Checking. It'd be so embarrassing if I did that again for you guys. Okay, grateful. Now for my hearts. I'm just gonna put them on the outside. I don't want them to be so close that um, it's crowding the word. So I'm just gonna leave a space here about the size of a space that I would put between two words. There's one. There's one. Okay. And then, now that we've got that all stamped out, we are going to go ahead and peel that from our electrical tape. And I use these again, so I'm just gonna stick it somewhere to use another time. And we're gonna take our Sharpie and color this puppy in. We wanna make sure that we get the ink all the way down into every impression. Sometimes one thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and color it in and let it dry for a minute and then go through and color it again just to get some extra ink in there just to make sure that I got everything. And you see how I'm coloring over the top of everything? That's fine because we're gonna take care of that with our buffing block, our, our polar block. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute. If you could not find a polar block, um, you just need a buffing block for fingernails that's a really fine grit um, buffing block. And so you can get that on Amazon or somewhere else if you couldn't find it there. Okay, so. We are going to use our buffing block to remove the extra ink and give this a nice sort of uh, satin finish. So the first thing I'm going to do here is get in there with this buffing block. I'm trying to make it so that both cameras can see. Let's see here. Oop. Move this around a little. Hopefully it's visible. There we go. So we're going to just buff this away here. So you can see that that ink is already coming away. I'm using the corner of the buffing block just because it gets into the little crevices a little bit easier. One thing that is a common mistake is to stop with removing the ink before you have removed all of the ink. I'm gonna show you what I mean. So this might be a common place to stop buffing. Let me have you take a look at this. You can see that inside the heart, inside the G, and just in these little nooks and crannies, there's still a little bit of ink there, which is okay, but we wanna make it really nice. So we're going to use that corner, that buffing block, to really just keep going and get right into those little places to get rid of those little bits of extra ink there. And at this point, it's okay if I bring my blank over this, this edge here because I'm not moving metal anymore, so it's not going to affect it negatively. This heart doesn't want to come clean, so it's going to need a little extra TLC. Part of that is just because as that metal moves, when we're hitting it, it pushes some of the metal up at the center it just makes these little divots, and so that's what causes that little reservoir for the ink to sit in and just not come out. You can see, I mean, I was pretty careful, but mine is still crooked. I just shake, and so that's just, that's just how it goes for me now, and I'm not going to be upset about that because it's just, it is what it is, you know? So now I'm going to use my buffing block all the way across this blank is from right to left, only buffing in one direction. So just right to left and not up and down because I want to match the texture all the way across so that it looks nice and uniform. Just switching to another side, that corner was getting a little sad there. I used it on a few bracelets and it was wearing down. Oh, 
I want to look at it closely and make sure that there aren't any spots where I can see the transition between oh, I you know buffed here and then I buffed here and here so now I've got buffing lines and I can see that right here so I'm just gonna kind of uh, blend these together right here can you see that go away okay so now our front is finished and then since like I told you before the back side gets a little bit sharp I'm going to use the edge of this buffing block to just go over this back corner here so just right here on this sharp corner and just take off that sharpness I don't need to buff the entire back of the blank just just that sharp edge there depending on the supplier that you purchase these from that sharpness can vary so sometimes you'll get them from someplace that they're just totally unfinished and you save money but it's just not fully finished so it has that sharp edge called a burr on the back and sometimes you'll get them from someplace that they're pre-finished so they won't have that sharp edge that burr on the back side okay so that is now all fixed up you can see my fingerprints on here, but we're gonna get aluminum dust on our hands and so that's just gonna show up, but you can wash that with a damp cloth. Okay, now our last thing to do is to go ahead and shape this into a bracelet. And the way that we do that is with our bracelet bending pliers. Now with these, the way that I make sure that I am holding everything correctly is that I will turn this so that when I am looking at it, it looks like a smiley face to me. Can you see that? So here's my two little eyes and my smiley face. And so the smiley face is looking at me. And then I make sure that I insert my bracelet blank into this little mouth here with the words facing me, okay? So I don't start at the middle, and I'll show you why. In just a second I start at the end here and you're just gonna pinch it and as you can see that starts to curve it and you just come in little bits at a time so that you're making sure that you're curling the whole thing without getting little kinks in it now I remember that the center of this was in between the T and the E so I'm going to keep bending until the edge of this bending plier reaches in between the T and the E. And then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna work on the other side. So keep going. Now I'm there and I'm going to squeeze it. And then instead of turning anything around, all I'm gonna do, keep my little smiley face, keep it so that my um, stamping is facing me and just turn it upside down, see? still facing me everything is still facing the same direction because you'd hate it if you accidentally did it this way right after all that hard work okay let's go ahead and bend it starting at the tip until the edge of my plier covers the letter T see how it's a little bit uneven and it's not a bracelet shape at all yet it's close but we're not there so what I need to do is go ahead and use my pliers smiling at myself over on this side a little more to bring it in there we go and you can see I left a little bit of flatness right here it's not completely rounded and the reason for that is because your wrist isn't flat and so you want a or psh, your wrist isn't round <laughs> so you're going to want this to not be perfectly rounded you want it to sit nicely on your hand and you'll notice this is too big for me, so I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So I'm gonna put it on my arm. If I was to walk, I mean, this would just fall right off of my arm there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my hand like a C shape and cup this in it. And then I'm gonna squeeze with the tips of my fingers. I'm not gonna squeeze this way. I'm gonna squeeze this way, okay? So just squeezing with the tips of my fingers. And I know pretty well the size of my wrist, so I'm just gonna keep going until it's about right. 
but that's about right for me. And then if I decide that it's too small, I can open it up by putting my fingers inside right here and then pulling out like this. Um, focusing with my pointer finger there, so kind of in this type of a motion. Okay, so I want that a little tighter for myself still. There we go. So, grateful. Okay, so now we have our cuff bracelet. It's all finished up. We've got it sized to fit. I realized I just was not getting mine to fit the way that I wanted to, so I just kind of bent those edges in to make it fit the way that I want. And then also you can add additional bracelets, so more little cuff bracelets, and just stack them up. And you can just start a collection now. They're really cute if you add texture to some of them, which you can do with that ball peen end of your hammer. This is really hard with a five-year-old. Um, if you change up the fonts and things like that. So anyway, let me show you how these, oh look how I put it. Which way does it go? Who cares? I'm gonna feel better if this is right side up. Ha! So, there we go. Anyway, hopefully we can make some more cup bracelets in the future and start a collection. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.